Our next guest, I don't enjoy listening to anyone talk boxing more than him. He's a Hall of Fame boxing trainer, the host of the Fight with Teddy Atlas podcast. Our man, Teddy Atlas. Teddy, Teddy welcome. Thank you, guys. How you doing? Doing we are good. great, How man. Are you? We are great. And, and I am hyped about this fight. I haven't been hyped, this hyped about a fight in a while. Um, and I, Teddy, you shocked me. I was listening to you on a podcast. I can't remember what it was. It was a couple days ago. Can't remember the name of it. You picked Wilder. So you got me thinking, okay, maybe, because I've been thinking Fury all along. So why do you think Wilder? If that isn't confusing enough to people and shocking enough that I pick Wilder. What I'm about to say is even more confusing. Fury is no doubt the better fighter. I mean, he's more dimensional. He's just more solid in every area. He's shown that he can box. He's shown that he can back you up. He can walk you down. He's shown that he's got a great chin. Um, he could overcome things. He's probably mentally stronger. Uh, probably no doubt about it. Than Wilder, I can't see Fury making the the kind of excuses that Wilder right. made after that loss. Was I mean, it, it's not what a champion does. You know, a champion loses with dignity, and then they come back. But they don't make those kind of excuses. They face things. That's what makes them a champion by facing things. But yet again, he's got that Wilder being he. He's got that one thing that you can't coach, that you can't teach. You know, punches are born. Then they're, they're not made. And um, he's got that great eraser. Now, look, I say it all the time on ESPN, on my podcast, you have to have a delivery system that works, you right. know, to make that power mean something. You know, my mentor, the great cousin Milo, he used to say, hey, Teddy, if you don't have a, having a great punch is like having a great military weapon, a, a bomb, an explosion, an explosion, but an explosive. But if you don't have a means to get it to the target, it has no military value to it. You know, all it does mm. is blow up, make a hole in the ground, and when it rains, you go swimming. And <laughs> that, that's the thing. He's got a new trainer. I know the old saying, old dogs don't learn new tricks, but hopefully for his sake, he learned a little something. And I mean little, like keeping balance, like using your jab at the right distance, like throwing a right hand without losing, without falling in, out of position. If, if he's learned some physical, technical things, some of those tangible things that are learnable, then I think that he has a chance because of what I'm about to say. Remember that sometimes movies, they really relate to real life in their own way. And remember that I think it was the third Rocky when, when he was getting ready to fight Club Lang and Mickey, his trainer, said, I don't want the fight. And he said, what are you talking about? I'm champion of the world. I beat everybody. There's going to be no problem. He said, I don't want the fight. Finally, he, he forced Mickey to say, look, they were set up. Those guys <laughs> who were fighting were set up, kid. This guy will knock you into tomorrow. And, and then when he said that, that, Rocky said, you mean you mean I didn't beat anybody? You beat guys, but they were handpicked. And all of a sudden... He went from being heavyweight champ of the world to not knowing if he was ever heavyweight champ of the world. He had no identity. Mm. That is powerful. That, yeah. that is redemption. But that is, that is so strong. In other words, really, you look at Wada. He fought nobody. He fought Ortiz. Ortiz was a decent fighter, but he was 40 years old. Other than that, if we're going to be honest about it, they were putting pins up like in a bowling alley, and he was knocking them over. And, <laughs> right. and now he's got to deal with the realization that, hey, maybe I was never heavyweight champ. That's what he's – right now what he is seeking is not a title. It is not money. It is his identity. Who am mm. I? Was I ever a champion of the world? Can I walk down the street and ever – feel like a champion of the world or a guy who fought a bunch of setups. So for me, that's very powerful. And wow. that's Ted why I'm picking Wilder. T Teddy, let that's me ask rich. you, with, with all the multiple COVID delays and just, you know, uh, the, the distance between the, the second fight and the third fight and what's going on, does that take the edge off of anything or, or no? 
You know, not for the fighters, because obviously they want to get there, but just the fight and, like, how people view it. Say that again. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, like, all the delays in this fight from COVID and different stuff, does it take some of the edge off of this fight or no? Yeah, this no, listen, that's, that's a variable. That's an intangible. That's okay. a tremendous point on your part. And, you know, I it, it changes things. Where, how, what, we don't know exactly. But I felt, and this could change it against the guy I'm picking, because I felt when the fight was originally <coughs> planned to happen that Wilder was ready. I thought he was mentally and physically ready for that fight. Wow. And all of a sudden, the fight was changed. You know what counts now, to your point? What did they do after that? Did they take a break? If I'm the trainer... He's taking a break. He's not going right into another camp because that's how you lose it. That's how you leave it in camp. That's how you get overtrained. So that's very interesting. And that is, that is floating out there above this whole fight is did Wada take a break? Is, is he in the kind of condition mentally and physically he was at that time? And on the other side of the coin, Fury, did he get enough time off to fully recover from COVID and get a proper right. training camp. Well, now, now Teddy, his trainer said he was coming in 20 pounds heavier than the, the second fight. Is that a good thing for Fury or a bad thing? It's a bad thing because I don't care how you dress it up, you know, how, how you try to pitch it. You know, everyone's going to pitch it in their favor and, the, the way, you know, the way that you want to. But at the end of the day, he came in 278 pounds which was a lot heavier in the second fight. And now you tell me he's going he's gonna to go up into the 300 range? That, and you're going to try to tell me that, you know, that that's positive? Hey, I don't have to go to Jenny Craig to know that that's not positive. <laughs> <laughs> that is our man, Teddy Atlas. Teddy, great stuff as always, brother. Appreciate you. We always. appreciate you. And, hey, I'd love for your prediction to come true. We will see, my man. All right, listen, I come on with you guys for one reason, because you're gentlemen, you're good people, and that's it. Man, thank, thank you, brother. We feel lot, the same Teddy. way about you, man. Yeah, Real talk. Real thank talk. You. Speaking of poor defense, let's go to boxing where uh, Deontay Wilder, he, his defense looked like Seattle's defense. Wow. <laughs> In his fight against uh, the second fight against Tyson Fury. And uh, tomorrow night, they get it on for the third time, Rob. The first one was a draw. Uh, Fury knocked, I'm sorry, Wilder knocked Fury down twice. Did you think that, that was fight. a draw, that one? Because that, that, you remember, we were down in uh, downtown L.A. for the press we went, conference. We yeah. interviewed. And, and did you right. go to the fight? Because Rob I didn't go and to the I, fight. Rob G. Yeah, and I went, went to the fight. Right, I, yeah, had, we, I was we out of town that weekend. I actually thought Wilder... I know he got outboxed and all that, but he knocked him down twice. When you knock somebody down, it's a 10-8 round. And, yes, Fury outboxed him, but he didn't dominate. Like, it, it was, I mean, Wilder was missing. When he, wasn't, when he didn't knock him down, he was missing wildly. But Fury wasn't, like, doing damage, doing real damage to Wilder. I, I know a lot of, most people think Fury won the fight. Um, I, I actually liked Wilder with the two knockdowns um, in a fight where the other guy didn't hurt him. Uh, but obviously the second fight, Fury dominated Wilder in, in just, I mean, unbelievable fashion. And most people, Rob, think it's going to be similar, if not worse, tomorrow night. Do you have a view on it? What are you thinking uh, on this? I, I don't know. I was interested in, in Teddy Atlas's uh you know, analysis that, was that we had yes, and yesterday. He picked, uh, and he picked he picked Wilder, and and you and most people are picking Fury, right? I mean, the yes. Masses. Although I was on with Skip Bayless today on Undisputed, he picked Wilder. He in, did. I think a ninth or tenth round knockout. I believe ninth. Um, I, I think Rob Shannon and I picked Fury. I picked Fury in a unanimous decision. And here's my thinking: like, I I, I don't. Most people say Wilder's only got a puncher's chance, and I get that, and, Fury, or, and Fury's going to demolish him if he doesn't get knocked out. I don't think it's that simple because I think there's question marks surrounding each fighter that really make this intriguing. As far as Fury goes, 
he had COVID, Rob, in the summer. And, and I think he had it twice. So has he fully recovered from the COVID? Uh, did that impact him in his training? And that, that's what I was asking Atlas yesterday. Right. You know what I mean? With all the delays, Chris, and everything, is he all the way back? Did he put in all the work that he needed to? Will that impact him going forward? That, these are questions we really don't know. Do right. We? Well, Rob, there were rumors coming out of his training camp before he the fight was postponed because of his COVID that he wasn't looking good. And, uh, and we'll see if that's true. But we know he's entering the fight. Uh, his trainer said yesterday he'll be 20 pounds above what he was. 20 in the, pounds? 20 pounds. Now, Rob G, they had to weigh in the day. He was, what, 277? Okay, and he fought at 273, I believe, in the second fight. So that's only a few pounds heavier. So only four um, pounds. But so then it's not he's going to pick up right. weight. He's going to pick up weight, you know, as he, you know, gets his water back. And, you know, you 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 – kind of eat up after your weight. No, no, no. I know. I've, so I've seen he, he those guys to make ring. weight. Yeah. Right. right. To make right. weight. It's unbelievable. And he didn't have to make any weight as a heavyweight, obviously. But he'll make he'll he'll probably pick up some pounds by the time they enter the ring. Um but does is he what kind of shapes he in Rob? He didn't want the fight. Not that he was afraid of Fury uh, of Wilder obviously, but he was looking at Anthony Joshua Wilder had to basically force him to take this fight because of what it said in the contract. And you wonder, is he taking Wilder lightly? Does he think it's going to be an easy victory? And maybe he's not as sharp as he was in the second fight. So those are the questions surrounding Fury. As far as Wilder, it's the demons, Rob. You know, the history of boxing is that bullies who've knocked everybody out for years have not responded well to being knocked out themselves in a first loss. We can go back to Sonny Liston against Ali at that well, time. Used to, Clay. Right, they're not used to tasting canvas. Right. So it's a shocker. It really is. Right. And it, it, it rocks your whole world because your whole identity in most of these guys is, is on you're the biggest, baddest man on the planet, to use Tyson, Mike Tyson's words. And once that's taken away from you, who are you? Well, everything you had confidence in has been taken away from you. So what's left? We saw it with Liston. We saw it with George Foreman, who came back, but it was 10 years later in a, an Apostle Paul-type religious conversion to, for, to him to get his mind straight. And then we, we saw it with Mike Tyson. Going to the octagon, we saw it with Ronda Rousey. Roy Jones wasn't a bully-type fighter. He was dominant and undefeated, but he was never the same after Antonio Tarver beat him. It's one thing, Rob, if you lose early in your career, right? Right. Because you got no choice, right? If you want to be a boxer, you got to bounce back. But once you've been dominating everybody and you lose later in your career, it's got to be tough to bounce back. I bet you uh, Floyd would probably quit after he, if he said he got knocked Knocked, you know what I mean? Like it'd be he, interesting, Rob, because I don't think some this people, late in the game. Do you know what I mean? That he, yeah, would, he well, he's he smart enough not to fight anybody dangerous. No, no, you know what I'm, I mean. I'm just saying, say if he got knocked out, I don't know if he would come back. If he got knocked out, here's the thing, though. Roy Jones, who used to be, I, I won't say reluctant to fight, but he was just, you know, he was, you know, remember this? He was playing basketball games. He played for the USBL. Yeah, on the yeah. day of a fight, like. He was toying with dudes and wasn't, you know, pressing for fights. Once he got knocked out, all he wanted to do was fight. And so I don't know if uh, Floyd, I don't think it's going to happen because Floyd's smarter than that. But, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, I got Fury in a unanimous decision, 12 rounds. But we'll see if uh, Wilder became I'm going to go with Wilder only because of Teddy Atlas. No, I love Teddy, and that, that made me think, Rob. No, I'm that, just, that right. definitely got a brother thinking. So uh, I, I definitely respect Teddy's boxing knowledge. All right, uh, I want to say this, and Teddy Atlas brought it up yesterday. Like the one of the big storylines here is Wilder saying he, he got a new trainer. We know he had all types of excuses, and he blamed Mark Breland, who was a great fighter in his own right. Rob, you remember Mark Breland? Breland, and, are um, you kidding? Go, oh gold yeah. gloves. Yep, yep. And he I was a trainer his whole career. For uh, Wilder, and I'm sure he did a good job, and I thought he was right to throw in the towel. Wilder, I give Wilder credit because he was a warrior and wanted to keep fighting, but he was getting demolished. 
and he wasn't about to come back and win that no, fight. No, your corner man has to do that for you, Chris. Yep. They can't let keep leave you out there to get hurt. Right. I'm sorry. Absolutely. And so, uh, but he got rid of Breland and hired Malik Scott, Rob, who is was a fighter. And I don't know if you know this, Wilder actually beat Malik Scott back in, I think, 2014, knocked him out. And uh, he ends up hiring Malik Scott to be his trainer because Scott was kind of a boxer, you know, a skilled guy. And so their goal was to reinvent Wilder and give him more boxing skills. Now, obviously, he's not going to become Sugar Ray Leonard in a matter of 19 months or ever. Let's just keep it real. But as Teddy Atlas said, can he develop the rudimentary boxing skills? Like, Rob, he looked like he had no boxing skills in, in the second fight. But he couldn't avoid uh, Fury's punches. He was off balance, woefully off balance. That, some of those knockdowns, I mean, I'm not saying Fury wasn't tagging him because he was. But some of those knockdowns looked like they were due to a good punch that caught Wilder while he was off balance. And so can he get his balance together, his footwork? Can he learn how to use the jab as a weapon and not just a measuring stick? And uh, learn how to, as Teddy said, deliver the big right hand in various ways. So set it up in better than he had been in that second fight or really for a lot of his career because he's never been forced to learn how to box because he was able to knock everybody out. But I think that's a big, uh, that's a big question heading into this fight. And we'll see tomorrow night if he can do a little bit of boxing to aid him in that big right hand. All right, let's get to these calls. 877-99 on Fox if you want to jump in. Nate in uh, Austin, Texas. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What up, Nate? Hey, guys. How you doing? Doing good, good man. How are you? I'm good. It's Nate from Austin, the weekly caller. Uh, man, so glad yeah. you guys are covering this topic. I'm very passionate about it. I feel like Breland uh, did Wilder a disservice. If you mm. watch the end of that fight again, listen, Wilder was exchanging punches with him. He was not done. And I think a little bit of stamina, Wilder is going to knock Fury out. I don't know what mm. round, but he is going to knock him out for sure. Wow. Well, what? Okay, let, stay on. So, keep so you're, you're, on, you're, on with, you're on with Teddy Atlas. You, you believe what like is Teddy. your explanation for what happened in the second? I get it. And Wilder was he still had his wits about him. He definitely wanted to fight. I give. He's got heart and courage for sure. Yeah, but I, but, but also, he was Breland's getting a, a former fighter, Chris. He know he no. He I, know I, I agree with the stoppage, but I'm just saying like Wilder w- wanted to keep. It wasn't like some guys who just have nothing left. And, exactly. You know, he had a so, lot of fight left in him. It, it, yeah. All it was was stamina. If he just gets his stamina up a little bit, I mean, I still don't think they should have they should have pulled him. I think he still could have won that fight. If you go back and look at the last two fights, who's been on the on the canvas more, Fury or Wilder? It's not even close. Well, well no, because Fury went down twice in the first fight. The right. second fight, Wilder went down like six times. What was it, Rob? You check. It was like uh, multiple times. I That's don't think why, it was six times, Chris, but... Maybe I mean, it was listen, four. It was Wilder it was ridiculous. has the power to knock out Fury. He just needs a little more stamina. And I feel like he wasn't done in fight two. I feel like he's a better fighter. Fury's confidence is going to get in his way in fight three. He's going to leave his big old head out there to get hit too many times, and he's going to go down. All right, All right hey, we'll see. Well, he was knocked down twice. He was knocked down. Wilder was only knocked down twice. Man, it seemed like he was on the canvas about six times, if I remember that fight. 